In the next few tutorial steps, we will make a component that tracks clicks. We'll be doing this as a class-based stateful component. In this tutorial step, we'll just focus on the props and the type definitions for those props for a class-based component. We'll do this using TDD the whole way, and at the very end, go to our browser and see what it looks like. We're going to make a counter component. What does that mean? First, we create a test. So on the kind of TDD layout that we'd like to do, on the right-hand side, I'm gonna make a new file. I'm gonna make it for the counter component, so it's gonna be counter.test.tsx. Yes, I would like that in Git. Thank you very much, IDE. I'm gonna paste this from the tutorial in the guide. This is a lot of typing. Uh, and what this test is doing is it's going to render a label and a counter. And at the moment, we haven't implemented the counter component, so I'm getting a red squiggly, yay! The test failed because the counter isn't implemented, but more or fail faster before that, I'm getting a red squiggly saying that this isn't implemented. So I'll go over here and I'll make a new file for counter.tsx or the component. Uh, we have a live template that can help us write React components. So I'm gonna say, make me a React component class, ES6 style. And sure, name it the same thing that the file's name. That's pretty smart, cool. So I've got that, I'll do prettier to, um, to make it look correct. And under the div, I'm going to make a label and it's gonna be four, but we can't say four because that's a symbol in JavaScript. Instead, in React and JSX, I have to say HTML4. Uh, and I'm not gonna use the brackets. This is just a string. So I wanna make it look a little bit more like HTML. So it's gonna be for the counter that I'm about to put in there. It's gonna say count. And I'm gonna make a span with an ID equal to counter the thing that the label was just pointing at. And I'm gonna say a roll of counter. This is a little bit odd to say that. It's an accessibility thing, but it also helps us in the testing, which is what we did over here. We did a get by roll, which comes from the testing library. And we use that in our test to go grab the span. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So for right now, I'm just gonna say a one, and um, this is complaining a little bit about, uh, about the value of the role. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So with this in place, I've got um, the component is kind of sketched out a little bit right now. I can come back over, Alt-Enter on this to do an import. And uh, do any reformatting that might be necessary. When I save, how's this gonna do on my test? So my counter test now passes because I have a label and I have a span. Next thing we want to do is allow passing in a value for the label into this counter component. I'll start again by writing a failing test. I'll duplicate this test. I'll change the heading to say that this is a test about a counter a counter with a custom label. And what I'll do is on this, I will go ahead and make this fail, and I'm gonna say label equals backtick current. And I'm now going to expect this text to say current. I'll do any reformatting I need. When I save this test, gonna fail. Cool, test fails. And then I can go back over into my component and do a little bit of what we just saw with the functional component, start accepting some props. And I'll do this first by making some type information um, on the component. How does this work in classes when we want props and later state to have uh, type definitions? We do it with what's called a generic. This component is a generic type, which means it can accept some things kind of like parameters. And the first parameter is going to be the type definition of the props. And I will use the same object destructuring kind of thing to inline this type definition. And it will be a string. So I'm now 
got rid of my TypeScript error by putting this type definition. Well, as we saw before, we don't like to put these type definitions in line. Instead, what we want to do is put this as its own standalone so I can reuse it. So export type, and I'm gonna call it counter props equals that. Clean that up, and here I will say counter props. And again, TypeScript compiler is happy. So that's working. Not yet using this. This is just in the type information. So I got to add it to the runtime implementation. Where could I put this? Props and classes and React have a long history. You could put these in lots of places. For now, I'm going to do an approach uh, which is kind of embracing ES6 destructuring. Inside the render method, I'm going to do a const where I extract the label from the props um, of this dot props. And so it's going, it's taking the props that were passed in using object destructuring to get a value called label uh, as a constant. And this label, I would also like to have it have a default so that my other test passes. And then I can save. And my tests run. And I still am not finding the label of current because I need to use it. Look, I get the uh, auto completion, format, save. And now this constant of label that was extracted from object destructuring of the props is now available. And my test passes for passing in a value and I can have a default. Okay, good. Our standalone counter component takes a prop, passes the test. We're not yet using it in the parent component, so we kind of need to wire it back into the UI. If I go to app.tsx, I see I have a heading. This will be a good place to use the component, this new counter component. So if I say counter, the IDE knows that their component is defined somewhere in the project. So I can just say enter. I can provide a label. And instead of the default, I will say current. Reformat. Save. And my tests uh, pass because I'm not really doing any testing of this. So I'll go back over to app.test and put something in. I'll put it into this test and just kind of test the whole assembly in one test. And what I'll need is I will add a const label equals get label by text, which I'm not yet uh, extracting from the testing library. So I need to get label by text. And now I can pass in current. And I expect, let's see. What's going on here? I expect label to be in the document. Nope. When I save, I'll get a chance to see if my new counter components label of current is actually in the document. It is, which means that my app is correctly using the counter. One last thing we'd like to do is take a look at this in the browser. If I go over to npm start, I see that it's still sitting there running and I can go click on the link to go to the browser. Look, we have hello react and here is the counter component with its label and the current value right beside it.